Welcome, welcome. Hope everyone is having a great Thursday. Aaron up here, get things moving, get you guys some updates. Oh yeah, we got all the updates. What's up, Matt? What's up, man? How are you doing today? Oh man, uh, just kind of a, uh, who's Spider? I know, it's just, yeah. Nope. Are they trying to, to chit chat? No, they just, they just cut oh, it out. They ran. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it happens to the best of us. Oh my gosh. Wow. What a, what a, like, what a week. Um, yeah. I, I do want to get into some updates on Dexani, but holy crap, a week it has been. Um, Jesus. So, on the uh, Dixani end, we have done a whole bunch of updates, um, right? The Fiat onboarding is there, and literally literally this morning, we added MoonPay in there. We were having some issues with them before, um, but it looks like those are solved, at least hopefully. Uh, so, we have a fourth provider now. Um, we should have another between four and six on its way. So you'll be able to get right in, find the best deal, find one that works with you, your bank, your cards, whatever, um, be able to onboard. And then the next step will be obviously the off ramping, right? So then we can, uh, we can kind of solve a number of the problems, um, with using centralized exchanges. So pretty, pretty big deal right there. Um, absolutely. Like, I mean, that's the end goal, right? We want to, we want to make sure that you've got access, control your funds. And we want to make sure that you don't have to, uh, use centralized exchange if you don't want to. Um, and that you can get in and out while always having access so that if an FTX, a Voyager happens an SVB happens, whatever, right. You have alternate means to access this stuff. And uh, it, it's yours and belongs to you. So, you know, we're still traveling down that path, um, which is all all following that path of security um, for everybody. So pretty cool. Uh, pretty awesome uh, piece that got added. Really, really thankful to the guys at Meld for helping us out with getting all of that set up. They were an absolute blessing. And uh, really, really have uh, provided some amazing financial products to us to be able to integrate in um, with what we're doing. Those guys are absolutely fantastic. So, but anyways, um, we've been watching some of the, the swaps and really, really proud of a lot of the people that are trying to use the platform. They're, they're venturing out beyond their pink fuzzy Ethereum blanket. We're seeing a lot more... Um, BSC, Polygon, and Arbitrum swaps than we have uh, seen in the past. So that's exciting because that means that humans are expanding out out across the ecosystem. And realistically, that's what we want, right? Like there's not going to be one blockchain to rule them all. And there's a lot of different reasons to go to different ones. So seeing these swaps coming on multiple chains has been pretty impressive. Um, We broke... 4,200, I believe, uh, users very recently, and almost uh, 500,000 in swaps, 450,000 in swaps. Um, so pretty awesome to watch that grow and uh, see that continue moving. You know, uh, the market got a little boring as far as uh, charts go, right? We've just been kind of on the east side hovering in that 1700 to 1900 or 1800 range for what? Almost a week now. So, um, yeah, well, more than a week, right? We broke 1700 back on the 17th and then we popped over 1840 like once or twice. So, uh, 
in the crypto market, that's a, that's a little boring. So, you know, um, hasn't quite been uh, as that crazy bull market we were all hoping for was coming, but this is actually a really good thing, right? Because it's holding really strong here. I was just going to say, I feel like it, it's looking pretty good. You know, the whole year is 2023. If you're just looking at ETH and Bitcoin, it's been a pretty nice little climb. It, we haven't gotten huge rejection, which has been nice. No, um, not at all, right? What we started the year out at 1200 on ETH and three months in, we're 50% up. I mean, like... <laughs> I don't know another industry where you get 50% gains in 90 days. Conversely. Plus with all the other stuff coming going on in the industry. Right? And I was going to say news. that. Like, that's what the really crazy part is, right? Um, so just this week alone, right, we watched uh, the CFTC uh, file a 74-page complaint against Binance. And what did the market do? It went up. It ran. <laughs> uh, you know, and last week we watched that ridiculous uh, Wells notice that came to Coinbase. And what did it do? It ran. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's really interesting to watch this market completely defy really uh, all logical um, and rational you- movement. Would you say that's a pretty good sign of confidence in the market, Aaron? I would say that's sign of confidence in the technology. I, I don't even know yeah. if I'd use the term market because, right, we are talking it's about te- yeah. technology. I mean, we're talking about an, an entire new financial system, right? And so, yeah, I would say that's a lot of confidence in that. But also, conversely, not a whole lot of confidence in the government uh, to do anything. So... You know, that's also the other piece to look at is that like, oh, you guys say you're going to do that? Well, guess what? We don't care because we don't think you will or can. So, what? hold my beer. So, I, yeah, I, uh, I think that there's a lot of faith and confidence in the market, a lot of faith and confidence in crypto across it all. Um, and so, you know, uh, it is like... Um, pretty interesting to, to see that, right? Because uh, all rational, everything rational says the market should not be that excited. And the most interesting thing, though, right, combined with that Wells notice is uh, Elizabeth Warren pushing this uh, bill that would affect your crypto wallet, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, essentially... What she's saying is that crypto wallets would have to comply with anti-money laundering and KYC, which is just like, it's not possible. Like, it's not technologically a a possible thing to do. I mean, I suppose you could, but it doesn't make sense because wallets have been around forever. They're a free thing that you can build and run and interact with the blockchain. Um, so they're trying to hold like developers accountable for literally just building you, um, uh, just building access, an access terminal, a, a point at which you can access this stuff. Right. Like, and that doesn't make sense. Right. That's like holding, um, an internet service provider accountable for somebody uh, having access to kitty porn, right? Like that, that's what this equivalent is like, yeah, that's illegal. You can't do that, but you're not holding the, you're not holding Chrome accountable to that. You're not holding Safari and Apple or Google accountable to that. So how are you going to hold somebody that just provides access to the network accountable? doesn't make a whole lot of sense um she apparently now is also running ads saying she's starting an anti-crypto coalition that's wild like absolutely wild and what's really crazy is in the reasoning she's like 
You know, it's the number one use for money laundering and drug dealing. And the statistics say that, yes, it gets used for that at about the tune of about $10 billion a year. Now, we're talking $10 billion in an industry whose market cap is over a trillion. Okay? So, by all means, that could be a fairly large amount. If that was how you were going to look at it, right? Like that comes out to like, what, um, like a 10th of a percent, which would be a lot, right? But that's not the volume, right? Like you only get $10 billion in transactions here in an industry who does how much volume in the last year, Um, right? Like we did just yesterday, it did $50 billion in volume the the market right like is that right let me see thousand yeah 50 billion dollars in volume yesterday alone so and that's just centralized exchanges um doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when we're talking about it in this magnitude of you know a hundred trillion dollars a year like or more right in volume like how are you gonna say that and then when you top off the fact that between 800 and a 800 billion and a trillion dollars is used of just fiat currency and fiat funds um like wild absolutely wild so i mean regardless of what she wants to do, I don't really think anything's going to happen. Um, you know, ultimately, right. We know what the reality of our legislature is in trying to do any of this stuff. Right. Which is like, they, they just, they get nothing done. So, but conversely, again, jumping back into the political side and the law side, uh, Gensler came out, uh, yesterday, early, early this morning, um, in an article and said, oh, we don't need regulation. We don't need rules. Uh, the rules that we have right now um, apply to crypto just fine. Well, my only fucking response to that is, then why the fuck didn't you reply to Coinbase with that? They asked. They provided documentation. Why didn't you respond with the current rules or what applies? And then when Coinbase asks for more clarity, reply back with some fucking clarity. Like, it's just bullshit. It's complete crap. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it just doesn't make sense. And it needs clarity. Um, 110%. It's, it's a wild idea that they believe that this all is the same. And now that's not me saying that some of these regulations don't apply. Because they do. Okay, like some of these things can 100 percent apply, but it's just not a reality that it all does. It's not reality that it all makes sense to put it in there. I was literally reading a paper last night about what's called a utility credit token. And it's a new concept. Um, One of the guys out of one of the uh, big old DeFi and uh, uh, DAOs and groups I'm in uh, kind of wrote it and. You know, it, it's a utility credit token, right? So it's it's giving utility and giving credit for using the utility, right? The token was designed for. And part of that is, is to solve, you know, what's called, you know, they call it kind of the problem of the commons, right? So, um, you know, it's... Uh, it definitely wouldn't apply, right? Like, it just wouldn't. So, I mean, I don't know where, like, he's coming off saying, oh, well, the laws we have are all the same, right? Like, on the other note, XRP, rumor has it, we may be within days of getting a final, like, answer to this thing. I doubt it, but you never know. Um... Right. So there's a lot of big news happening, a lot of really interesting things happening. There's some blatant attacks 
um, that are on the industry and the industry is just kind of laughing at them. And you can actually see that in the charts. Like I need to figure out how to, how to do TA in like, I don't know what the laughing emoji TA looks like, but like somebody needs to figure out what that is. Right. Like, because that's basically what the industry just did. The industry sat there and was like, guess what? We don't care. So, um, and, and that's a really bullish, a bullish thing for us. Right. As far as the economy goes, um, you know, we're, we're an interface and a data aggregator, uh, focusing on security to allow you to have everything, right. To have, um, that centralized experience and be able to hold your funds and not be worried that some centralized exchange is going to go down. Right. Or that somebody's going to take your money or that your bank's going to fail or whatever. Um, which I think, you know, honestly is kind of the first step. This is, this is our way forward. Um, as far as the industry as a whole goes, right. Is, is to get away from these centralized entities and, you know, focus on the, the goals of crypto, right. The, the goals of you own your stuff. No one else owns it. It's yours. You can verify it's yours. You can see it's there. There's cryptography, uh, that, backs it all that's that's the goal of crypto and if we're going to do that we got to create a, a platform like what we're building right now and that is a place where you control it you own it you can get in you can get out of it you're never having to hold it in a centralized um, place for any uh, real amount of time and you can move throughout the ecosystem fluently without having to go to 57 different places So, I don't know. I think it's all kind of bullish. Um, honestly, I think the fact that they are scared enough to want to go and do this stuff. Yeah. Kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal that they're that worried about it. Um, it is funny that they are targeting crypto immediately after their banks failed. I don't know if anybody else got any humor out of that. I, I know I sure as hell did. Um, I thought that was hilarious. All right, like, mm, your bank's failed. Ah, it's obviously we should go after crypto right now. Not go after and determine the risk processes for banks that are essentially nothing more than under collateralized stable coins. Like, there is nowhere in crypto where anybody would accept the way a bank works. Nowhere. Just wouldn't happen. It's not, it's, no, nope, wouldn't do it. Nobody would accept that. All right, like, I'm going to give you money, and then you're going to go use that money somewhere else. And if I want to go use my money or move it, Maybe it's not all there. There's nowhere. No, nowhere in hell in crypto would they do that. Because it doesn't make any freaking sense. Because we're propped up on a house of cards Jenga tower sitting on top of it full of debt. And that's just absolutely insane. So, um... <sighs> wild absolutely wild what they've decided is uh is important um you know i i don't know how gensler can actually say that the rules and the regulations we have are applicable they just don't make any sense if they were everybody would do it um but they're not. It just doesn't work the same way. It's not a system built around your antiquated system that is just nothing but debt. So, but anyways. Um, I wanted to jump into this utility credit token uh, for just a little idea. It's a really 
really kind of cool concept. Um, I know a lot of people in here, I'll be able to listen to this, have been in the space for quite a while. And it, you'll recognize a lot of these problems that they talk about in it. So in it, they talk about um, what's called like perfect alignment, right? You know, in projects in crypto, you, you basically have three distinct groups, right? Users, community members, and token holders, right? Uh, users are the group that makes any app or whatever's built that helps genuinely have a, a chance of success tick, right? Users, that's users, number one, right? Um, but they're usually outnumbered by uh, community members and token, by, by token holders, right? Um, and, and they contribute basic, token holders contribute basically nothing, little value, right? But they feel entitled to extract it, right? And, and I know there are people in here that are listening that understand this problem 100%, right? You have holders that, you know, they hold and that's all they do, but they feel entitled to extract the value from the actual users from the community members that are there. And that's kind of a problem. And we know that that's a problem, right? That's, that's these pump and dumps. That's everything else in the lower market cap ecosystem, especially. So, you know, when you're trying to remotely get any value, actually build something, right? It's, it's a Sisyphean task, right? It's, it's rolling that ball up a hill nonstop and never getting anywhere which just basically makes you fail sooner than later. Um, and so when we like look at what this, the proposal here is for the solution, it's, it's kind of interesting. And the solution is basically a token that has like an internal kind of meta currency so that token is the utility token um, that you can only access by taking part in the, in the ecosystem. You can only access it by using the utility. It's the only way you can access any value out of it. Right. So by creating various incentives, right, that's how you get access to that value, which is pretty genius um, from a, uh, from a token design standpoint, right? You know, these these days of just buying a token, holding it, and hoping that everyone else does the work and you can exit or slowly, peacefully with your Lambo, um, I think we all can agree is it's kind of gone, right? Like, you can't really do it. I mean, we watched yeah. it even during the bull market. We watched these projects that require that, you know, you needed people that participate and some people just wouldn't participate at all. So this uh, kind of uh, aims to solve that, which is kind of an interesting concept, right? Like basically it's like, yeah, you can have the tokens. You just can't access them, move them, transfer them, sell them at all, unless you're interacting and using the utility, unless you are part of that ecosystem, right? So yeah, you can have them can't do anything with them so it's an interesting concept i think it would piss a lot of people off um but uh i i'm curious to see how it works out i kind of i kind of love the idea um you know it uh what did what did he say in here um you uh the design proposed here doesn't eliminate these groups as that is neither practical, certainly not in a decentralized fashion nor necessary. It does, however, realign the ability to extract value squarely and exclusively with users. In contrast to the status quo, where there's just a handful of users, but orders of magnitude more token holders that simply exist yet feel entitled to some positive outcome based off the work of others. This realignment is the substance of how it fixes the tragedy of commons and the free rider problem. I don't know what your all's thoughts are on that. Um, 
I think uh, I, I kind of like it. I, I kind of like it. Like, you can't, you don't get to just be a token holder anymore. Like, you got to be a part of the ecosystem. You've got to use the utility. You've got to use what this thing was designed for, what its purpose is in order to extract the value. I think it would piss a lot of people off. But kind of love it. I'm not going to lie. I think it makes a whole lot of sense. Like, if you're trying to build something, you can't just have token holders anymore. You got to have users. You got to have participants. You got to have people in there that are also incentivized to make this thing succeed. Kind of absolutely love it. Just saying. So, I don't know. Maybe we become a utility credit token. Wouldn't that blow some people's minds? I don't know. Anybody else got any thoughts on that? Like, what would, what is that, what does that look like? Like, what would be people's reactions to that? Yeah, I think you're right. I don't, I don't think people would know what to do. Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't get to just buy it and hold it and then be able to just sell it because the chart goes up. Um, I, uh, I think it's a pretty interesting concept. Um, I I would be there's a, a the guy built what's called WUSD, which is wrapped USD, which uh, uses um, Glove. What Glow is the the name for it is the um, credit token that you earn for wrapping. Um, what you call for wrapping different stable coins. So these got different ways that you can earn that token by participating in the WSD ecosystem. Um, it, I think, th- I think his route was a little overly complicated um, for most people in the in the space. Right? I think you could do this in a much simpler manner. Um, you know, little things like, like, let's say, let's say it was, you know, on, on our platform or something, um, it'd be like, okay, you've got to swap or you've got to, you know, share a tweet or, you know, refer to however many people, right. Whatever, you know, it is, um, in order to access, uh, you know, the value, um, of the tokens, like, um, I think. I think that's a much simpler manner than, than what he had set up. Um, I mean, even though I participate in the WSD ecosystem, um, uh, but uh, it's just overly complicated, but I, I think you could do it in a much simpler manner. I, I kind of like it though. Right. Um, kind of like it a lot. I was actually kind of playing with some mathematical algorithms last night using some AI for how to build something like this um, out of a, out of a concept. So, but we'll see. Um, I don't know if that's entirely the route we would go, but I, I kind of love the idea of, you know, you want to, you want a project to succeed, you want a, an app or a DAP or whatever to succeed, um, and it uses tokens, well, then people need to be using the utility. They need to be using the DAP or the app or whatever it's designed for in order to access that value, right? Conveniently. Well, I think, that, I, think that's a, go ahead. I think that's important there because uh, – the biggest problem with the last bull run was people were investing in the charts. And when the chart started to go down, everyone jumped ship. Yep. We need to get people to start investing in the technology. So they're using the technology. So when the chart goes down, they're not as concerned because they know the value is there. They're still getting a piece of value, right? They're still getting something. Um, Crazy. Out of it. 
people mm-hmm. are, I think as the industry evolves, that's going to be a big thing. I agree. I think, uh, and, and I think, you know, also it definitely keeps you far more out of the hot water of the regulatory side, right? It's like, look, no, no, this is a utility credit, right? You, you gain these things or you get these things and you can access their value, right? By participating in the utility, right? Like, you know, you got to hold so many and you got to get so many credits before you can do things, right? You can get bonus credits, um, bonus points, whatever, for you know, liquidity providers or um, whatever it happens to be, referring or getting a partnership thing kind of set up. Like, like you can be that, right? And you start really leveraging and doing that. And the thing is, is that because you're still going to have just token holders. Like you can't get rid of them um, entirely. Right. But, you know, I don't know. They, they would, it would definitely push them there. Right. I do like also how he uh, defines them. He he says users uh, actually use the DAP may have token community members exist in slash form the socials of the project generally hold tokens but rarely use the dap token holders it's self-explanatory rarely if ever use the dap do nothing um if one is merely a token holder perhaps due to a three-eyed raven signal on some chart or simply a community member that spends the bulk of their time repeating the usual trait commentary to chat and still get to benefit from by being allowed to extract value produced by actual users, what's the incentive to take on tangible risk by becoming a user? So, you know, basically, it's it's all incentivizing, right? It's all it's providing something of value, providing something that makes uh, life a little easier, giving out these credits. And I really really like the concept. Um, I think there maybe it's a little a little looser than the way that he describes it. He's got it in a much more enforceable manner. Like I think uh, when I wrapped you, when I wrapped my USDC for WSD, I have to wait like 90 days before I can access my glow um, that I earned. So, but you know, if you're looking long-term, what's, what's really 90 days? Like, really is it that much i don't not really to be honest i haven't even really looked at it let me see and glow is trading at 508 dollars a token not doing much volume that's where it's at so kind of an interesting concept though i don't know i like the idea I actually like it a lot. So. But we'll see. We will see where this goes um, in the future. We'll see if anybody else kind of adopts this concept um, and goes anywhere with it. Not really, really sure where it'll end up um, really at all. But I do kind of like the idea. Actually, I like the idea quite a bit. Um, it solves definitely a pretty significant number of the problems that uh, really exist kind of in the space, which, which is pretty awesome. I mean, if you can incentivize somebody to use use it and like it's like dexani right like we know that if you use it once um you are you know far more likely to use it like it's 1.6 times more likely to use it again um so if you've got a good platform if you've got a good something 
that works, then, you know, you've definitely got a good one. Uh, definitely a good opportunity. Um, so, I don't know. It was a really cool, it's a really cool article. It really, like, puts a lot of thought into the economics behind all this stuff and how it makes you wonder where it functions. And you combine that with Gensler saying that, you know, the rules already apply. Um, then, you know, I don't know. I think, uh, I think it's probably the way forward. So anyways, um, sorry, I'm just, uh, Just uh, writing something back. So, anyways, um, yeah. Anyways, wild, wild week. Uh, we get we put a whole lot out there. Um, a whole lot out there this week. Besides adding MoonPay, uh, we got more routes. Um, the fiat onboarding is pretty solid. I have to say. Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, not having to wait. Uh, a couple of people in the community said they had to wait seven days right now for Coinbase to mm -hmm. send. They went back to that. So being able to get that money right in your wallet right away is pretty pretty solid. I know I tried it out with Transac, which worked for me, and uh, it was under an hour. I think at one point it was like like less than fifteen minutes. Like it was fast. I was like. I was like I went and, like, made a cup of coffee, came back, sat down at the desk, and I went, it's like, okay, I'm going to go check. It was, like, already there. I was like, holy crap. Yeah. The longest part is take putting your information in because they want to make sure it's your bank account. Yeah. But but that's standard for anything. So, yeah, I think that's the longest part. The actual transaction doesn't take long at all. And once you've made the account on those things, because since we're aggregating all those, once you made an account on those, like, you literally just go log in again. That's it. Um the one, the one uh, provider I didn't realize is uh, Benny is in Australia. Said he he rides by the building every day. He didn't understand what the building was. Oh uh, yeah, Banksy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. yeah Banksy is uh, is uh, has their offices out there in Australia. And so yeah, so right now what we've got since we just added MoonPay back, um, we've got four providers. I have, I got some emails back from the other ones. Um, so we'll have hopefully even more providers soon. Um, so, I don't know. I will <laughs> say you have, you're going to have the same, if you have challenges with certain bank banks or certain states or countries, you're just going to have to play around with each provider because you're still going to have that challenge per se like capital one won't allow any kind of crypto purchases yeah and, I, and there might even be um i wonder if they'll work with moonpay moonpay though does sometimes does generally have pretty decent fees not quite as good as like wire so um or but there is also google pay option and apple pay option in, in yep. so that's another, you know, yeah. route. Banks has definitely got the lowest fees, um, I'm pretty sure. But they don't always give you the best price. So you've really got to kind of look. I think uh, Wire has been given some of the better fees for, uh, or the better pricing for um, for ETH, right? Like the, what, they're, what they're selling ETH at to you. Um, but their fee is a little higher, so it kind of ish even it doesn't really even get even out. They generally are um, about the same. So you know it's it's pretty slick. We've been trying to get this for a little while and get it all hooked up there. And the guys at Meld really really helped us out. So I can't say enough about um, just how good they were to us on helping us get all this uh, infrastructure back in and uh, pieces all set up. So. Um, and as soon as we uh, get some more um, licensing and stuff, 
that has to go along with some of the agreements with these, there won't be any more pop-outs. It'll all be right there in there. So you won't have those little uh, modal pop-ups or anything like that. So it'll just be boom. It's all right there. So I'm looking forward to that. I hate when, when we have to redirect or uh, have any pop-ups or send somebody out to somewhere else. Um, it's kind of annoying to me. So, but I guess it just kind of uh, is what it is. Um, so, <sighs> trying to figure out this uh, this little issue with USDT. Um, the USDT contract is a very very old contract, and it doesn't allow you to change approval amounts on it. Scott, that was your issue. I completely forgot about that. Um, so trying to figure that piece out now. Like, what do we do with that? Mm. Oh, it's fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I say it's an old contract, we're talking, um, like, written in, like, November of 2017. So, it, uh, it's definitely old school. So, changing that is, is going to be a pain, um. Mm. I'm kind of curious though now. I wonder what happened there. Um, <sighs> sorry, somebody just said, somebody else is listening and they they sent me a text message and me laugh. Um. Anyways, so. We're going to keep moving forward. Uh, we'll be running some public stuff um, for the Road to One Billion uh, coming up in the next week or two. Um, getting all of that out there. We'll be unveiling all of that right now. There's a whole back-end piece being, um, being built out for it to kind of... Uh, Um, so we'll have that all out there. We'll have a new dashboard for you. You can see where we are. You can see what our progress is on that road. Uh, you'll be able to see where you're at, right? As far as getting people engaged, uh, getting your referrals out there, where you're at volume wise, how many points you've earned. Um, and all of that piece will, uh, will be available, um, in a front end. The back end is, uh, just proving to be slightly more challenging than we expected to, um, be able to build and you'll kind of see why that is uh coming up because it's pretty exciting um we've figured out some really innovative and fun ways to reward people um for interacting and using the platform uh beyond just trading with it you'll also get to see we'll uh, we have we've named our ai assistant and we've got a whole avatar for her um, and so you'll get to see some uh, some pieces there um, with her, and that'll uh, come up uh, again probably within the week. Slowly but surely, get that rolled out. Um, each of these little pieces, we're teaching her more and more every day. You guys are asking some good questions to her, um, so you know definitely learning quite a bit. Um, uh, about what people want to learn, what people want to um, experience uh, on the platform. So, you know, we are on that route to on that route to uh, to get there to um, to to become that one stop place that you don't have to worry about centralized exchanges anymore. A place where you can own your assets, where you can quickly custodialize all of your funds and actually own them and have them regardless of where they are. And then you make a decision of what you want to do with them. Where do you want to uh, offboard them? What do you want to buy? Where do you want to move them to? 
And nobody else gets to make that decision anymore. That's the goal. We want you to be in control. We want you to be able to make your uh, decisions and live in a place where you aren't worried about what happens if uh, my bank doesn't have money in it. What happens if the centralized exchange I have my crypto in just decides not to allow withdrawals? Like until Monday or something. Right? Like that's kind of crazy. So, um, uh, you know, that's uh, that's the goal. Right? You know, we'll be able to kind of keep you, um, what's the word? Keep you safe and still give you all of the fantastic options that come with being able to live, work, breathe, and be part of an actual, you know, free economy, an actual free system. So that's kind of the the overall direction that we're headed, and we're still moving down that path. And if you're um, paying attention uh, to the change logs, you can see all of that that gets updated. So pretty pretty cool, pretty cool um, on uh, on that end. So, but so. Anybody else got anything that they um, want to chat about, want to cover before we kind of start to uh, wrap things up just a little bit? Okay. Um, it's been an exciting week. We have a whole lot of like things we don't know about um, coming up. I, I would just say, Aaron, if anyone has a project out there and they want a, re- a review that we've been doing, just send me a DM either in Telegram or on Twitter, and I will more than happy get the review done through our uh, through our software. Awesome! Yes, please. Um, those have been uh, great. Those have been working out really, really well um, for all of us. So. Hmm. But yeah, that's uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate everyone for coming. We're going to keep this one just a little shorter. Um, we had a whole lot of announcements, both on our end and uh, in the industry as a whole, that we need to keep an eye on. And so I anticipate that the next few weeks are going to be really, really in- interesting um, that are coming. So... All right, guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. Enjoy. We'll uh, we'll get some more updates, some more information out there for you as we continue down this road. Have a wonderful day. Have a good day, guys.